Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. My name is Myra. So friends, today is jam-packed with lots of ideas. So let's get started. So my first project is a large cutting board that I got at the Dollar Tree, but it was in the $3 section and I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. I'm going to be adding one of the IOD paint inlays that came out this summer, and it's called Delft Traditions, and it is the one that's brown. And all the IOD products that I use in today's video, I will share my affiliate link to Decoupage Central in the description box below. So this particular sheet is 12 by 16, so I go ahead and cut down what I need, and then I go ahead and put the other part back in the package. And I'm gonna trim out up at the top, and then those little pieces that I trim out, I'm just gonna use those pieces to finish off the detail up at the top. And with paint inlays, you wanna go ahead and put a good coat of paint on and let it dry. And then before you get ready to put on the paint inlay, you're gonna to want to put on another coat of paint that's just a little bit thicker. And before you put that paint inlay down on the top of that second coat of paint, you want to just spritz it really easy before you lay it down. And that just begins to activate the paint in the paint inlay so that it goes really well into that second coat of paint. Then once you lay it down, kind of spread it out with your fingers or maybe just a little wipe, and then you're gonna spritz it again with water and don't let any of it kind of puddle on top of that paint inlay. And if any of it is puddling, you just wanna take a little paper towel and blot it gently so that that extra water is not sitting on top of that paper. And then you're gonna let it dry for about an hour. And once the, the grid that's on the back side of that paint inlay that's facing you looks dry, then you know that it's ready to take off. But before you take that paint inlay off, go ahead and spritz it again and let it sit for about 60 seconds and then very gently pull it up and see that magic and how beautiful it is once you pull it up. And I love how the paint from the paint inlay mixes with the paint on the cutting board and it's just so beautiful. And once that gets dry, I go ahead and spray mine with some Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer just to protect it because that paint can be reactivated with any sort of liquid. Next, I'm using a little cheap frame that I get from the Dollar Tree. It's actually plastic, but it looks sort of like it's basket weave. And I take the back of it off and I paint that with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And this time, I'm gonna put another paint inlay just right on top of that glass. So I set that frame off to the side and I paint that glass and go through the same techniques. And this time, I'm just using one of the smaller paint inlays that's just a little cluster of flowers. And I'm gonna add that to the glass. And I'm also gonna show you how I messed up. So <laughs> it accidentally dropped on top of that paint, but the part that dropped was the back side of it. So I had to kind of put a little bit more paint on that glass and then I flipped it over and actually, you can't see the grid anymore because it got a little bit of paint on it. But you just go through the same technique and you go ahead and spritz it and you wait until it dries and then you spritz it again and then you pull it off really easy. And then that glass, I'm actually just going to sit inside of that frame and you'll see that in just a minute. So because this little cutting board is pretty tall, I decided that I would make a little round tag out of it. And I used another one of the little paint inlays that's kind of rounded off and it's a tree with a little wreath around it. So while all of that is setting up and this is ready to be put onto the cutting board, I put that glass back inside the frame and then I just glue that right on top of the cutting board. 
And then with this little tag, I'm actually going to punch a little hole in the wood. And then I'm going to hang it from the little neck part or the little handle part of the cutting board. And this cutting board actually came with this twine that had the beads on the end of it. So I kind of had to finagle it a little bit so I could hang the tag with it. And then once I got that tag on it, then I'm just going to get my hot glue gun out so that I can kind of set it down with that hot glue just to kind of get it ready. And then I'm just going to tie that around and have that little bit of the twine with the little beads hanging down at the bottom. And then to kind of finish it off, I go back with Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the color natural and put some around the edges and on that frame and around the edges of that tag. And I love the way that it turned out. So what do you think? So if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and become part of our family. So let's keep going. So on my next project, I'm actually going to be mixing up some inks so that I can have some orange ink for a project. So I take some of the tomato red ink from IOD and then I use a little bit of the turmeric and then I add a little bit of the mixing white. And you can buy these little empty bottles along with the different colors. And then it's just one of those trial by error. You just mix it together. And um, then what I like to do to kind of see if I've got it to the place where I like it, then I'll just shake it all up and I'll get like a little Q-tip and hold it up against a piece of paper and then see if it's too dark and then I add a little bit more of the mixing white to it as well and then I just keep mixing it until I'm happy with the color. But now I don't make a lot um, just because this is not something that I'll be using all the time but I wanted to have something for my projects this fall. And then once you get it all mixed up and you're happy with the color, then it comes with one of the little tops that it, the other ones have on it already. And then I just use a blank ink pad and rub, push that into that ink pad. And then that way I'll have some already ready for my next project. But actually, before I did this, I had already mixed some up and put it in a little plastic tray. And I used a little stamp of some flowers from the Charlotte stamp set that came out this summer. And I stamped three different clusters on just a little white napkin. And this is just a little pumpkin that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I decoupaged those napkins that had been stamped onto that little pumpkin. But before I show you the final piece, I'm going to show you this pumpkin as well. This is a very large pumpkin that I thrifted last year, and it came without the stem. So I painted that with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream, and I'm going to add a mold to it. This is the IOD Frames 2 mold, and it's really decorative. And so I make that with air-dry clay. I put cornstarch in my mold. And I put that clay in it and push it out to the microwim. And then I just use an old gift card to smooth it out on the back. And I'll be putting it on with Tight Bond Thick and Quick, which is the gray and the blue bottle. And I get that at Walmart. And I like to let my mold set up for about 10 to 15 minutes. And because I tend to be generous with the cornstarch, I very gently brush that off before I paint it. 
but I then go ahead and use a really soft bristle brush to paint it, and that helps to reduce with the cracking. So when I put it on this pumpkin, I'll lay it over on its side and I just really gently press that mold down onto that pumpkin so that there's no little edges sticking up. And then I just lay it off to the side for a little bit so that it won't slide down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. And then this is a little picture that comes from Decoupage Central and I'll make sure to share that in the description box below. But this piece of decoupage paper has four different images of some little girls in fall colors. So I just use my fingernail to kind of press down on that image what I need. And then I'm going to be gluing that decoupage paper right on top of that mold where the little frame part is. If I had not used this decoupage paper, another option is to stamp into that clay while it's still really moist and damp. And you could even stamp into it with any of those IOD stamps. You could have stamped an initial in there or even like a little rose cluster that I had used on the previous pumpkin. And when you stamp into clay, I do like to put a little bit of cornstarch on that stamp so that it doesn't stick. Now I need to dress up the top of that pumpkin before I make my stem. And this is the mold that's called Oak Leaves and Acorns. And I make several of these leaves out of the Dawes Air Dry Clay. And I'm just going to put those all around the top of the pumpkin. And the little part where the stem was was rather large. So I'll lay those leaves sort of into that little part where the stem would have been. So put those down with tight bond thick and quick, and then I'm gonna be making a stem to go inside of it. But once again, I'll let those set up for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I go back and paint those with chiffon, Rust-Oleum chiffon cream. And then once that paint has set up and I know for sure that it's dry, I'm actually going to go back with some Waverly Antique Stain. And I know that it's really dark. And I have also used the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the Color Natural. But for this particular project, I actually wanted the stain to be a little bit dark. So I brush that on and then I just wipe it back with the baby wipe and that helps to kind of um, sink into the details. Now I'm going to be making a resin mold out of the IOD Bobbles mold. And you've probably seen me do this before. So you mix part A and part B resin. And I've actually started using a new kind that I get from Amazon and it's called Fabricast 50. So I mix that up because in the particular bobble that I'm going to make, it needs 24 milliliters. And that's a real advantage to using the IOD molds because there are little arrows and that point to either or to all of the different molds within that mold. And it tells you exactly how many milliliters of resin that you'll need to put into that one particular one. Now I'm going to be making this one double sided. So with this Fabricast, um, you mix it up just a little bit longer than you do with the Amazing Casting Resin. And I pour it in. And this time, I go ahead and put the entire 24 milliliters in it. But when I make the second one, I don't put as much in it. And you'll see that in just a minute. Now the Fabricast, it does set up a lot faster than Amazing Casting Resin. So this is the first part of it. Now this time, when I put mix up the resin the second time, I don't put as much in the mold. Then I'll lay that other mold right on top. And I just kind of hold on to it for just a little bit because I want to make sure that those edges connect. And then sometimes some of that resin seeps out, so I just use a little Q-tip to kind of wipe it back. And I do let this sit a little bit longer to make sure it's set up. And then you have a double-sided mold. And I know that this mold is not available right now, but any IOD molds that you have 
that are symmetrical, you can make double-sided molds out of those. And I know that you've, if you've watched my channel, you've seen me do this a lot. And then I just kind of use a little finger sander to kind of sand around the edges. And one thing I forgot to tell you is I use that antique stain to kind of um, put some in the edges or the little the little ridges of that pumpkin and I put some on the frame and on this particular double-sided mold I'm going to do it the same way I'm going to paint it with rust-oleum chiffon cream and paint some of that Waverly antique stain on it as well and then I'm going to be adding that to the top of this pumpkin so I just use a little bit of tight bond thick and quick just so that it makes it contact with the edges and then I go back with some hot glue to kind of finish it off and then I felt like it needed a little bit more so I added some more leaves but before I show you that I'm going to show you what I put both of these pieces in so this is a drawer that came out of my in-laws house um, and my husband cut some spindles to make like a little um, I guess like a little box to put them in and I just painted that with rust-oleum chiffon cream and I added a mold from the di from the mold called olive crest and then it, I just got it all painted and then I've got a beautiful box that I can put little vignettes in it not only for the fall but also for Christmas so what do you think so if you you know have access to any empty drawers don't ever throw those things away because they're wonderful to make you know, little trays out of. And then if you put spindles on it, then um, you've got like a little raised up little box. And it's, it's just wonderful to make little things like that to sit on your coffee table and on your dining room table. So what do you think? And I know this stain is just a little bit darker than what I normally use. But for that particular project, I wanted it dark this time. And then there's my little pumpkin with the stamp that I stamped on napkins that I used the ink that I mixed up. Now this is just a, a blank 12 by 12 piece of wood and I'm going to take some Dixie Belle pumpkin spice paint and I'm just going to paint around the edges. And then off to the side I actually have something that I cut with my laser cutter and it's just an embossed image of a pumpkin so I'm actually just going to glue that right on top and I'm gonna like little use some little clamps to hold it down and then I put a little hanger on it and then I'm just going to put a little bow on it up at the top and then I've just got like a little sign but this time I used some darker colors, like a little darker burgundy and more of a taupe color and some of the beige eyelash yarn. And then once I get my little bow made and I hot glue it onto my sign, then I actually take a button and glue that onto the knot of the bow. And the wood that I embossed that image onto, I did not paint it or stain it. I just left it natural. And friends, I could not find the video, but actually this is just a little wood round and I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And this is just a little image from one of the transfers that came out last Christmas called Holly Glen. And then I used some twine and I'm gonna make like a little tassel to hang from the bottom with a little bead that I thrifted. Actually, that whole bag that's sitting off to the sun, I thrifted that a pretty good while ago. And it's got a ton of beads in it. So it's something I'll be using for a long time. And then once I make that little tassel, I'm actually going to staple it to the back of this wood round. And then I drill a little hole up in the top. And then I put a little hanger on it with another bead on it because I like to hang little things like this from my light switches on my lamps. 
and this image is not really a Christmas image, but it's a really pretty bird, and it's got a lot of fall colors in it as well. So friends, we are coming to the end of the video, and I want to invite you to go to my Facebook page called Farm Fresh Designs, because I've started doing live videos from there, and what I do on my Facebook page is not something that I am doing currently for my YouTube channel. So make sure to follow me on Facebook so that it will notify you when I put up a new video and it will go into your Facebook feed. And also, this coming Sunday, September 1st, I'm going to be putting out a video that you do not want to miss. Um, I'm really excited about an announcement that I'm going to make in that video. So I know it's going to be Labor Day weekend, but make sure to watch on September the 1st. So in the comments below, let me know which is your favorite today. And also, have you attempted to kind of make your own color when it comes to the IOD ink? It's really easy, and I'm excited about some more colors that I'll be mixing up later on as we go along. So once again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and click the notification button so that YouTube will notify you when I upload my next video. Also, this Friday, August the 30th, I'm going to be doing a collaboration with these wonderful women, so make sure to watch for that as well. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you, friends.